One thing all of us will experience at some point in our lives is the loss of someone or something. Unfortunately, with living, we have to experience loss and I think that's the price we pay. I'm not religious, I don't believe in a higher being or definitely not in the sense of the Christian God. It doesn't matter if you do, in fact, I'm envious. I really wish I could believe in something like that. I spent a lot of time trying to believe. I went to church with my grandmother and I just never felt a connection with the church in that way. That being said, we all share a mutual connection to the unknown after we leave this life. And that's quite scary, but in that mutual understanding we can find something beautiful. I think we spend so much time thinking about what happens after life that we don't focus on what is happening during life. So this is why I wanted to make a video about what dying has taught me about living. Grief is a weird one. I'm sure, unfortunately, if you've pressed on this video, you have or are experiencing some kind of grief. That isn't to say you've lost somebody or that somebody has passed away. It can mean a relationship has broken down or you've lost a pet or you feel lost in yourself. We grieve things all the time without even necessarily labelling it as grief. I think one of the beautiful things about labelling something as a grief process is that we can acknowledge what we are going through is a loss. And I think that really helps us through the process, no matter what that loss is. Somebody taught me a really great analogy when it comes to grief, and that is the ball and the box analogy. The ball and the box analogy works like this. You have a box and in that box there is a pain button and in the box there's also a ball. Initially, when you start on that grief or loss journey, the ball is massive. I nearly spilled my tea, putting that down. Initially, that ball is massive, I mean huge, like the ball might be this big and the box might only be this big. And then you have a button. When the box moves a little bit, the ball is so big that it will every single time hit that pain button, no matter what, even just the slightest movement will hit that pain button. But over time, as you get on with your life or move forward, do new things, experience new things, that ball gets a little bit smaller. That isn't to say that the pain button goes anywhere, the pain button stays exactly where it is, but when the box moves, it becomes less and less likely that the ball is going to touch the pain button. This analogy is amazing because it has taught me that no matter how far you go, no matter how much experience you see in life and no matter what you do and no matter how you deal with things, the pain button will always be there. It's not odd for years later to suddenly have that little twinge in your chest where you feel sadness because the ball has just hit the pain button again. The ball isn't going to go anywhere, the pain button isn't going to go anywhere, but things shrink and become less likely to hit it. And I really love that analogy, even if I did butcher it in the explanation. And before I go into my little list of things, I want to make it clear that these things are what I'm still learning. I'm a learning being, we all are. We could never ever ever know everything there is to know and I find that fantastic. I don't want to reach a point where I know everything. What would you do then? You'd have no more books to read or no more films to watch because you just know everything. So I like to sit in the thought that I will never know it all and actually that's one of my points. I should probably stop waffling now and just get on with it. Number one, using how finite life is to be a motivation rather than a hindrance. When I first started a few of my grief journeys, I was, how can I put this? Really using the YOLO attitude in a way I probably shouldn't have been. I was going out drinking every day, every day. I mean, 
every day. <laughs> Didn't matter what the weather was, in fact during the time it was freezing and snowing, I would walk to the pub, I had a really bad like chest infection, I would sit at the bar and drink a hot toddy. The reason I did this was, I think, because I thought tomorrow I might not be here anymore, so what's the point? And although I've kind of come to the conclusion that it's probably a good idea to realise that things might all be different tomorrow, it doesn't mean you shouldn't plan for a future, because you hopefully will get there, and when you do, you want a bit of a plan. Since those episodes of drinking every single day and being a bit of a liability, I'm really sorry to my friends and family who had to experience that, I am sober. I haven't had a drink for quite a long time now um, and I don't think I'll ever go back to it, to be honest. I feel like I was using it as a crutch and I don't need it anymore. I'm still a socially awkward bean who doesn't quite know what's going on half the time and doesn't know how to speak to people, but I don't want alcohol to interfere with my life's experience. That doesn't mean you should do the same thing, it's just maybe step back and look at why you're drinking when you're drinking. But that is to say only if you think it's a problem. If you just drink for social reasons, that's absolutely fine and I'm sure you've got a handle on everything. Since giving up alcohol and living a more meaningful life, I've realised that yeah, it's scary and tomorrow I might not be here anymore, but if there's a risk that I will be here, I want to make the most of it and I want to have planned and saved and used that fear as a little bit of motivation as well. Even if I wasn't here, what am I leaving behind for my family? Am I leaving a legacy that I'm proud of, or am I leaving a trail of embarrassing stories? I think I'd like to leave both. <laughs> dogs. In the last year, I have learned a lot about dogs. Bear with me. Dogs live in the moment. In fact, in the last year, a very important dog has come into my life and she has really changed how I see the world. It doesn't matter what is happening, she is so happy all of the time. In fact, you tread on her foot and she whimpers a bit and then wants you to play with her. It doesn't matter if she's left alone for five minutes or five hours, She's still just as excited to see you every single time you walk through the door. Dogs have taught me that living in the moment in a healthy way is brilliant. You can appreciate the little things. You can take that bit of extra time to make your tea in the morning rather than just dumping a tea bag in and walking off and hoping that the day floods by. They have taught me that you can be excited about things and it's okay, it's not embarrassing, it's not silly. Life is incredible if you take the time to look at it. I will be forever grateful for this dog and I'm really glad I got to meet her. I don't know it all and I never will. I've touched on this a little bit earlier in the video and I just wanted to reiterate this. I was worried about running out of time and the thing is, from the second we're born, we're running out of time. We are never going to know it all, but in the time we're here, why not try and learn something? You don't have to know every single thing, even about the field that you're in. Just take the time to investigate and be curious, because that's what life's all about. The value of human connections. I went through a period around the time when I was drinking very heavily to try and have as many friends as humanly possible. I basically had a fear that people were going to leave and I was going to be left all alone. I think witnessing someone passing away and seeing how short life really can be, I was suddenly very afraid that I was just going to end up here all by myself. This meant that I was making a lot of friends who I didn't really have a connection with. I was seeking out relationships with people I didn't really necessarily get on with. It was just so I had those people around me 
to be there should anything happen to one of them. I'm ashamed to admit it, but I built friendships around the wanting to have people there. I thought having more friends was better than having a few. I've since learned that actually human connection is really important and you should be around your people, your tribe. You should have connections with each and every one of those people and it doesn't matter if that's only two or three. I have a very close-knit group of friends. They don't all necessarily know each other, but I have friends who I know I can talk to about loads of different things and not feel judged or that I can't open up. I have an incredible network of family and I have my person. I have connections now that mean something to me. I didn't necessarily go about it the right way, but when I somewhat cut people off, they might not have understood at the time, but it was probably best for both of us. We didn't have anything in common and we didn't share anything other than our want to get blind drunk every single day. On the point of being scared about being left alone, I have learnt to value time on my own. And this one I am definitely still learning. Somebody taught me that how are you ever going to be okay if you're scared to spend any time on your own? And that is very true. I never used to like spending time on my own, in fact I'm still struggling with it now. I wanted to have constant distraction and constantly be doing stuff just in case I was wasting time in any way. Now I'm trying a lot harder to be okay with myself. If for whatever reason I have to spend a period of time on my own, I want to enjoy my own company. And this is something that I think is going to take me a long time to fully actually believe myself, but I'm hoping that I get there. Belongings and stuff. This one a lot of people might not understand. I got rid of a lot of my possessions. In fact, I own very little when I think about it. I like to make sure I only keep the things that are meaningful to me. And of course the things that I use, like my cameras and my laptops. But should something happen to me, I don't want to leave my family with things to sort through. I want them to have a collection of cultivated things that made me up as a person. And yeah, that might still be hard for them, but it does mean that they've got a collection of things that made me who I was. And that wasn't necessarily all about the stuff. I'd rather collect stories and meaningful moments with people that they can cherish and keep forever. I really love photographs. And just recently I went through, I kid you not, 20 photo albums, might have even been more than that, but I'm in denial, 20 photo albums and condensed them into this little box. I must have got rid of thousands of photos, but I used to hoard them in case I forgot anything. But actually those photos were of people I don't even really know anymore and places I don't even recognise. So I've just become more aware of the possessions I have and I like to keep them meaningful where I can. Don't waste your energy. If you know me, you know that I spend a lot of time worrying. I am a worrier and I'm trying to spend less time worrying about things I can't control. There are some things I can control. If I'm stressed about a deadline that's tomorrow and I've only done half of the project, that is good reason to be stressed. But if I'm stressing about something that happened in the past, something that doesn't even exist anymore, then I should try and breathe and let it go. I spent a lot of time looking back at the past and looking at all my mistakes. Chances are, if you haven't known me in the last year, you have no idea who I am. I'm very different and I hope to be even more different this time next year. And unlike any other time in my life, I'm actually excited to see what that person is like. Reflection and meditation. Again, this comes back to the time I spent alone, I was very scared. I didn't want to think about things, I didn't want to dwell, I wanted to make sure my brain was constantly active. Now I've learned that actually reflecting and meditating especially is so valuable. 
I've learned so much about being able to clear my head and about being able to sit with myself and actually just be. We don't realise how much is going on and we never get a break from our minds. You always take yourself on holiday. And that realisation made me want to create a space in my brain that I could escape to when the rest of it was being a bit of a nightmare. And I think I'm gradually getting there. I've been using Headspace and really been enjoying the practice of meditation because it is a practice. You're never gonna be perfect. You don't hear about professors in meditation. What do you? I don't know. <laughs> These are just a few of the things that I'm still learning. I'm only human and chances are you are too unless you're a dog or a cat, in which case. Hi, how did you stumble upon this video? <laughs> I would like to be more understanding and more forgiving and happy in my life. I want to make the most of the time I have here and I'm really excited to do that now more than I've ever been. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, I'm Becca, nice to meet you. If you're somebody who watched my videos before, Hello, welcome back. I'm really happy to be here and I hope to share with you a little bit about me and about who I've become. I haven't been posting on YouTube because I spent a lot of time outwardly processing some of the things I went through four years ago. I am a very different person now. I don't want to cry on the internet with really dodgy eyebrows and just be a bit of a mess. I want to put out things that I love and things that have genuinely helped me, like creativity, sustainability and mental health. I want to put a little bit of my soul out there into the world and hopefully help somebody where I can. I didn't get to process anything privately for a long time and now I have. I really hope that I can use my creativity to help other people too. So I hope you'll help me to build a little community here and have a little safe space on the internet where people can just be themselves and share their experiences and give advice to other people because you never know who's listening and you might just save somebody. Thank you so much for watching. I cannot wait for this journey to start. Please do like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.